the biblical truth of our hymn. Today, a wonderful hymn again. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you're doing this bad hymns. And there are some, and we'll tell you what the bad hymns are, but this is not one. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Helen Lemiel. She was a gifted singer born in England to a Methodist minister and his wife. It's amazing how a lot of these hymns come from pulpits, family. Uh, she moved to America and when she was 12 years old. moved about various she was an active supporter of Billy Sunday's ministry and wrote turn your eyes upon Jesus in 1922 to be used in those meetings so you know what I can take about Mrs. LaMille she was against alcohol because Billy Sunday preached against alcohol glory to God the song was inspired by a track written by Lilius Trotter, a missionary to Algilia. Trotter was writing about a difficulty of maintaining focus while living in a world that provides us so many choices, and it does. She gave us the prescription of keeping one's life moving in the right direction. She wrote, turn your soul's vision to Jesus and look and look at him, and strange dimness will come over it all that's apart from uh, she's wrote over 500 hymns. Uh, she died in, in Seattle in 1961 at the age of 97. It is said, but it, it's not proved. But there, there's a part of this I want to mention. This is unproved. But it said that she married a European man but abandoned her. The marriage is unsure when she lost her sight. And he's unable to determine that she was blind, the writer who, who studied her life. There's a possibility that she became blind. Maybe like Fanny Crosby, and then, that there's no age on what happened. But there's a. So that's what it's said about is him. I thought this was a remarkable thing, Billy Sunday and all that. I mean, Billy Sunday is one of my favorites. Anybody who gets the beer industry trying to kill you because you've closed down bars and, and movie theaters and dungeons of sin, man, that's my favorite. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Old soul. Not the flesh, not even the spirit. Old soul, you're eternal. Are you weary and troubled? You're going to find that this hymn is gospel. This hymn can be sung to those that are lost. When the song leader gets up and says, we're going to sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. This can be sung by a lost man with an invitation by his lips to his heart. Old soul, are you weary and troubled? Today, lost people and don't even know they're weary and troubled and when they're weary and troubled they turn to a mask uh, sanitizer alcohol pills the media which makes it worse no light in the darkness you see because Jesus is the light that's John chapter 3 John chapter 3 states they want to be in the darkness they don't want the light. You got to come to the light to have everlasting life. There's a light for a look at all the Savior. You know, she just said Jesus is the light. It's an invitation. Life more abundant and free. Oh, sinner, get out of your darkness and turn to the light and look to the Savior. And it's free. It don't cost you anything. Through death, we're all going to die. Even Christians. Unless the rapture happens. In the life everlasting. Eternal life. 
Once you die, begins eternal life. You know, the moment that you're conceived, you're going to live forever. Now, your body may die, but your soul won't. And when you do die, the Lord tarries. You've begun eternal life, whether in heaven by Jesus or by hell without Jesus. And the eternal life has no time. He passed, and we followed him there. Over us, sin no more has dominion. When you come to Jesus Christ, the sin, the guilt, the shame is gone. Now, mean, nasty, Satan will try to bring it back up, but Satan, it's under the blood. And they'll try to attack you somewhere else, but once your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ, God, Acts 20, 20, 28, 28, 20, 20, 28, I believe it is. Once your sins are under the blood of God, Jesus Christ, that's it. They're gone. And it's free. And there are times that the devil will bring up sins, especially the ones before April 25th, 1987, when I got saved. The devil will bring up those sins and say, Lord, uh, devil, if God doesn't know what sins you're talking about, okay, I remember them. But they're under the blood. And if there's any sins that the devil brings up and I'm unsure if it's under the blood, I say, Lord God, I'm really not sure if this sin is under the blood. If it's under the blood, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And yet, if you know this sin, I confess it and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Then, guess what? Sin has no more dominion over. For more than conquerors we are through Jesus. You can conquer your sin. You can conquer being a drunkard. You can conquer being a druggist. You can uh, you can conquer being a sexual pervert. You can conquer whatever sin you're involved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Fight. 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 His word, capital W, she has it. John chapter 1, uh, 1 John chapter 5, that word is Jesus Christ. Shall not fail you. He promised. God promised. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Now, I wish instead of he, I wish they put, I wish you would put Jesus. I mean, Jesus shows up in the, in the chorus. I wish instead of I wish instead of pronouns they would put Jesus, but hey, there's Jesus in the chorus, and there's a lot of hymns that don't home Jesus at all. We'll give her that much credit. Believe, oh, bingo! Salvation comes by believing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth. There's no belief, there's no salvation. Believe him. And all will be well. Amen. And go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Oh, man, Miss Lowell, get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you're saved. Get out there and preach the gospel. Oh. Let's sing this hymn every week in church. And let's go up to the Christian that's in church and say, do you get the gospel out? Do you tell? Then don't sing to him. You got a lost man in church? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Get it off the world. She says, get saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Get out there and witness about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you're saved. And get out of the world. I wonder how many times this hymn is sung in the modern church today of the Laodiceans.
how to refrain. Now, three times we'll say, turn your eyes upon Jesus. There we go. Three times Jesus is mentioned. Look full in his wonderful faith. You can't look in the face of Jesus if you're guilty. You can't look in the face of Jesus if you're in darkness. You can't look in the face of Jesus if you reject him. You can't look in the face of Jesus if, if you, you know, you've got science as your God. Or religion as your God. Come to Jesus, the sinner that you are, and repent of your sins. And though your head would be bowed and say, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. At that moment of salvation, then you can look upon the face of Jesus. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. If you are a true, saved Christian, and you love the Lord and serve the Lord, yes. If you're a worldly, carnal Christian and not saved, no. I've seen too many Christians. that I'm not calling her a liar. You know why she's not a liar? Because she's presented the gospel. She says, once you get saved, go out there and witness. Turn your eyes away from the world and turn it upon Jesus. The liar is, when the world becomes strangely dim, the liar is, is that Christian, I'm a Christian, and you don't obey the Bible. And you allow the world to be light in your life and not the light of Jesus Christ. Now, you'll get a light, all right. Wood, hay, or stubble as it burns. And grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The more you turn the world and dim the world down to awe, the more the Lord Jesus Christ comes. What's wrong with churches today? They got the world turned on and got the Jesus turned off. And they... Well, Jesus is pleased with us. No, Jesus has been dipped down. The world has been brightened. And you have misfortune to think that the world is Jesus. You have been deceived. You are wrong. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. No moral, my brother, for Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. That light you may profess may be this light of Satan, a transformed artificial light, and it may not be the light of Jesus Christ. Be warned, because that light of Satan is in the churches, because the next verse shows no marvel for his ministers. And if you've got Satan's ministers, that light that is bright and shining is not the light of Jesus, it's the light of the world. That's why... Listen, well, how do I know if I got the light of Jesus or the light of the world? Know not, brethren, Jesus' words, that the world hated me before it hated you. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. If the world hates you, you got the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. If the world goes along with you and the world loves you, you got the wrong light. If they don't get offended at your preaching, they don't get offended at your services, you got the wrong light. If more people walk away insulted than stay and learn and grow in the Lord, that's the light. The light of Jesus when they get insulted and they get offended. That's the light of Jesus. Oh, we just love. We got a wonderful, great church. We just got a wonderful, great pastor. And we just got a great worship team and all that. And we got we got the old farts meeting in the morning. We got the young and lively teenage group. And they can bring out the drums and electric guitars in the afternoon. We we just have a good old camp kind of time. We don't have a camp meeting. We just have a camp. We play games. And we go and dive and swim and jump and, and horseshoe. And we just have everything but the Bible. And there's no Bible. There's no light for the Bible. She said the word capital W is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you one more reason or, or meaning. How do I know I got the light of the devil or the light of Jesus? 
If you got the King James 1611 Bible and you believe it and you love it and you read it and you study it and it is the only word of God, that's life of Jesus. You got anything else but the King James Bible? That's the light of the devil. And don't be fooled because I know there are people out there, I'm King James. No, you're not. I met those crowd. You're King James to please the sheep, but you're not King James in the heart. It's a big difference.